I'm here with Peter Draper from South Africa. He's a senior research fellow at the South African Institute of International Affairs. Welcome at the German Development Institute. Thank you very much. Peter, what do you see as the major contribution of the program Managing Global Governance, which is implemented jointly by the German Development Institute and GIZ? Well, I think one has to start from the standpoint that the developing countries in the G20 now are relatively new participants in managing global economic governance. So if one contrasts that with the G7, the G8, and its various incarnations before that, there's a lot of institutional experience, expertise, knowledge, etc., and knowledge of how to run the global system, whereas these developing countries are relatively new and inexperienced. So I think the significant contribution that this program makes is to take key individuals out of these countries and immerse them in those habits of thought, those practices, etc. And then those people go back to their countries, obviously, and impart that knowledge and, and expertise. So I think it's, it's a building process, but it's a fundamental building block. Today, you're giving a public lecture at the German Development Institute on Sub-Saharan Africa and G20 responses to the global financial crisis. In your view, what is the contribution of the G20 to economic development in Sub-Saharan Africa? There's no short answer to that question, but the subtitle of the talk is First Do No Harm. And essentially the purpose of the paper is to say that the the thoughts and the poli policies outlined in last year's Seoul Consensus on paper are a very good building block. Um, the right policy initiatives are in place and, and are referred to. Our concern, however, is with the political rhetoric and the political dynamics that underlie the implementation of those uh, good intentions, shall we say. So if, it, if the politics assumes a bad course, um, if countries resort to mercantilist actions, trade protection, particularly uh, currency devaluations, etc., then the impacts on sub-Saharan Africa, which of course is the poorest of the poor, are likely to be pretty severe. So essentially what we're saying is first do no harm. So you have a good policy document, implement what is in the policy document, uh, and don't resort to mercantilist actions. Finally, what is the role of emerging powers like South Africa in this respect? South Africa is an emerging middle power. So it, if you like, it has its feet in two worlds. It uh, is a key bridge to the developed world. It is also a key bridge to developing countries, but particularly African developing countries. So um, it is a key voice for reform of the global governance system. It can both participate in those debates and listen to many other African countries that also want to have a voice but are not represented. And that's essentially what the South African government tries to do. It represents its own interests. South Africa has a strong financial sector, uh, for example, and has an interest in financial sector reforms and wants to shape them to the extent that it can. But also it wants to represent African interests in reform of the International Monetary Fund, for example, and other multilateral institutions. Peter Draper, thank you so much for joining us today here at the German Development Institute in Bonn.